I'm sure many of you in the audience recall 2009 in ECX history. That was uh, the year that the auction-based coffee trading system was being transitioned to the ECX trading platform. Of course, ECX brought a lot of excitement and promise. But at the same time, there were many in the coffee sector who were very much concerned about the commoditization of this unique uh, specialty coffee and also the loss of traceable coffee buying based on arriving trucks. Now, we may have different ideas about the approach, but ECX did recognize these concerns and actually consulted with many uh, industry experts, both local and international, in the design of the coffee contracts that are traded on ECX board. And over time resulted in the creation of 83 coffee contracts, 55 of which were specifically and specially designated to the specialty coffee. Now, of course, this is Ethiopia, so uh, that's a no-brainer. But uh, of these 55, 31 actually represented a single origin coffee, like a Yirga Chafe or Kochare or some of the other fine Ethiopian coffees that uh, you know and love. When we look at the ECX stack-based model, it does provide identity preservation, but at the coffee contract and grade level. So if I'm a purchaser, and I happen to buy a Yirga Chefe grade Q1, which is a specialty grade coffee, I am guaranteed to pick up a Yirga Chefe a Q1 coffee from ECX. But what I'm not provided with is from which coffee processing mills these coffee bags that I have purchased come from. Now, if you are a bulk coffee buyer, Perhaps this may be okay. But I've heard from many of you in the audience and others over the years that this way of stacking uh, specialty coffee is just not cutting it for the specialty coffee market. One key initiative that has been on ECX management agenda for a long time is a coffee traceability initiative. The coffee traceability is not just about addressing the specialty coffee market needs, but it also addresses and has the potential to improve productivity, quality, as well as give us operational efficiency as well. But it also addresses some key food safety concerns that exist in the supply chain. So to this end, about three and a half years ago, ECX signed an MOU with USAID to implement the Coffee Traceability Initiative. Later on, the Sustainable Coffee Program joined hands to provide the additional funding needed for this initiative. Uh, I want to take a minute to recognize that uh, Nestle and JD has been an active supporter of, of this uh, initiative. Now, for a variety of reasons, th this project didn't really start until about a year ago. So what I'm here to talk to you about today is actually the work that we have done over the past year, but more importantly, what it means to you, the specialty coffee market, and some of the lessons learned and takeaways that uh, we took as we implemented this initiative and the way forward. The million dollar question that had to be answered was where do we start tracking this fine Ethiopian coffee from? Is it the farm gate? Well, in Ethiopia's context, where there are over a million smallholder farmers, that just wouldn't be practical. Therefore, the idea of tracking Ethiopian coffee from the farm gate was not something that we were able to entertain in this phase of the project. 
And the same for the primary market. Uh, that also was ruled out. So the next tracking point that we looked at was the coffee processing mills. Now, these mills are strategically located throughout the coffee-growing regions within Ethiopia, and each one of them representing roughly about uh, five-kilometer radius uh, small coffee farm areas. While there are roughly about 2,500 coffee processing mills, these mills presented to be a much more practical and manageable uh, tracking point for tracking Ethiopian uh, coffee. Now, there are about 2,500 coffee processing mills, so there's still a lot, but it seemed for us to be much more manageable and also uh, created an opportunity for future sustainability initiatives given the size of the small farm areas that they represent. Having addressed this, we obviously had to define the scope. We couldn't track 100% of the Ethiopian coffee production in the first run. So we settled on four coffee types, Yirga, Chefe, Sidama, Lakamti, and Jimma, primarily for liquidity and also to be inclusive of uh, the major coffee markets. Uh, still not a small undertaking. We're talking about roughly about 800 uh, coffee processing mills and a production of about a million coffee bags. But we weren't expecting to get all these million coffee bags into the system because it's based on a voluntary system. So we expect to get enough quantity through the system to demonstrate the feasibility of coffee traceability within the ECX framework. The cornerstone of our traceability solution is actually in the bag tagging. These bag tags are probably the first and crucial step that we had to do to ensure traceability and sustainability. These bag tags link every bag to the coffee processing mills that tagged it. Now, when we talked to the mills, they were actually very keen to tagging their coffee bags. You see, these tags gave them their coffee, their coffee bag, its own identity. So it became a matter of pride to them. Of course, they were expecting to get some premium for providing tagged, traceable coffee into the market. Now, bag tagging requires that we register every coffee processing mill that would be expected to tag. So we have registered about 1,400 coffee processing mills, capturing location information, altitude, the primary markets where these mills source their coffee from, some pictures, and the surrounding farms that they represent. We also have done some awareness building, educating them about the traceability project, what it means to them, what is expected of them, and sort of giving them the big picture. Before the start of the most recent 2015-16 harvest season, we've distributed these bag tags to those coffee processing mills that were in scope for this project. Now, strategically, we opted to have the coffee mills only tag the bags and deliver to ECX. Of course, in the future, they can actually scan these bag tags as they load it onto their truck and deliver to ECX. So the first starting point for scanning actually takes place at ECX when the coffee is being sampled and cupped. So after the coffee is graded and deposited into the ECX warehouse, every bag that goes into the warehouse is scanned in with the respective stack location where the coffee bag is going to be stored. After the coffee is traded and picked up by the exporter, we also scan out every bag that leaves the warehouse and associated with the stack location where it has been taken from. Now, at the exporter's warehouse, the same thing happens. Every bag that goes into the exporter's warehouse is scanned in to the warehouse of the exporter's facility. 
But later, when they're bulking the coffee to fulfill a specific contract that they have with you, the roaster, they're then required to scan in every bag that they have put into the hopper to bulk the coffee that is destined to ship to your doorstep. Now, you can imagine the amount of massive information that's been captured and the type of business questions and some of the things that you're talking about can be addressed by this effort. The system behind this traceability solution is based on a traceability repository invented by IBM, which stores the information based on GS1 EPCIS standard, so that if there are future opportunities to integrate with other supply chain systems and external partners, it will be possible. Then there is a mobile app that we've developed to capture every supply chain event, every bag that's being scanned and feed it into the repository in the back end. We have also a business intelligence capability powered by Tableau, which provides visuals, dashboards, and reports that are relevant and important for this initiative. So what was the outcome? Of course, it's a very short time, but we saw that at the launch of the coffee traceability initiative at the beginning of February, roughly about 9% of the coffee trade value for those four coffee types I've talked about actually was attributable to traceable coffee. Then in April, it went up to 35%. Now the price was interesting to see. We saw traceable coffee selling for higher price than the non-traceable. Remember, these are voluntary initiatives, so we weren't getting all tagged back. So we had an opportunity to actually correlate and compare the two. But later, towards the beginning and end of March and April, the price started to drop, and we were all puzzled. What happened? Well, the primary reason for this actually was the bag tagging and the scanning process that was introduced in every step of the way created some inefficiencies and bottlenecks discouraging the market, so they're reacting to it. Now, there are some interventions that will be introduced in the next harvest season to address this, but the data showed uh, it's, it's very encouraging. It's something that actually proven to have worked and gone through the end-to-end -end process. But that's not all. If you're interested in the coffee traceability initiative as a roaster, your prize is the coffee traceability report. This report pretty much tells you from which coffee processing mill your coffee that is in your doorstep has come from and shipped from Ethiopia, of course. Now, I've had an opportunity recently, back in the month of May, to actually witness the first traceable coffee arriving at the Nestle uh, UK facility where traceable coffee was being processed into their system, backed by a traceability report like this, pretty much telling them where their coffee was sourced from, when it was bulked. Of course, there's a lot more information than this that could be provided, but for the initial phase, this was what we have uh, settled on. There are also operational reports that we've developed. One that's interesting, worth sharing, is this real-time visibility of the inventory of tagged bags system-wide. You can look at it and slice and dice it at the delivery center level, shed, stock location, grade, or you can reverse it and ask for a specific bag, and the system will tell you exactly where that bag is. Powerful. This is also another example of operational reports to help them with improving the service delivery. Now, it wasn't a cakewalk. I mean, this is a, a nine-month project. You can imagine the number of stakeholders involved in this process. So we had to work and get everybody on board. 
So stakeholder management is no easy task and something that we need to continue to work on. The business process, especially the tag distribution, as well as the scanning process need to be optimized to make sure we're not impacting the process. We're also asking people to do something different. This is change, and change is very difficult for anybody to embrace. It's a universal fact and one that we need to continue to manage. The other interesting thing here is traceability introduces transparency and accountability like never before. Of course, that's going to create anxiety, in some cases resistance. Uh, so that also has to be uh, managed and, and controlled. Uh, yeah, there are power, infrastructure, telecom issues. That has been improving over time, uh, and I expect it to be the case in the future. But we need to learn and develop the right kind of solution that works for uh, the environment and the resources that the country has. So this idea of tracing this fine specialty Ethiopian coffee from the mill to the cup is no longer a distant dream. This project has shown that it can actually be done and sustained, but there's a lot of work to be done still. Now, the good thing is the government is 100% behind this, all along from the start of the initiative. So I believe that this is the right opportunity to get engaged. The market needs to support and encourage traceable coffee growers and suppliers by providing incentives and implementing development programs until traceability takes a strong foothold. Thank you very much.